I was in a taxi just over a year ago and was talking football. And the taxi driver said, the problem with that player is they're not mentally tough. And mental toughness seems to be a topic that everyone inside and outside of sport has got a view or has an opinion about. That player's really tough. That player's really hard. That player's mentally tough. Everyone seems to talk about, think about, has a view on mental toughness. But what does it really mean for a coach? And more importantly, can we do anything about it? Can I coach mental toughness? Well, I believe we can. Mental toughness is the ability of an athlete to do the job they need to do regardless of the situation they find themselves in. So for example, when we talk about the ability to pass a ball or kick a ball, to execute a basic skill in football, a mentally tough player can perform that skill accurately, at speed, when they're tired, when they're under pressure, in a problem-solving situation, in the last minute of a grand final. They're able to do the job that they need to do regardless of the situation that they find themselves in. The next question becomes, can I as a coach affect mental toughness? Can I help someone be mentally tough? Yes, you can. The three principles I'm about to outline will help you to understand mental toughness and how to apply these principles into the practices of your training program. First of all, mental toughness comes about by ensuring that your training and preparation are tougher, more challenging and more demanding than the competition that you're preparing for. A really simple way to get your head around this is that if I'm preparing an athlete to win at provincial level, I prepare them to win at national level. I prepare them to win a competition a level above that that they're actually going to be competing at. If I'm preparing an athlete to win at national championships, I prepare them as if they were going to an international standard competition. So by ensuring that my training and my preparation is more challenging and more demanding than the competition that they'll be competing in, I know with confidence and with certainty that my athlete has all they need physically, mentally, technically and tactically to do the job they need to do when it really counts. The second principle around coaching mental toughness is this, to ensure that the athlete knows with confidence that they've outprepared in every detail the athletes that they'll be competing against. So for example, if I have a young athlete going to their first national championships and I suspect that mental toughness is an issue, that they're struggling with the concept of being able to do the job they need to do in a national championship environment. I ask them to ensure and know with certainty that they've slept better than anyone that they'll be racing against, that they've eaten better, their gym work, their on-field training, their skills work, their time management, that every part of their preparation, every aspect of their training has been better in every detail than the competition that they'll face. And thirdly, to know with confidence and certainty that they've done those things consistently over the entire training cycle. Confidence comes from knowing. If I know my training's been at a higher level than the competition that I'm targeting, if I know that my preparation has been better than my competition, I can go anywhere, compete in any standard of competition, from provincial to Olympic level, and be very confident I can do the job I need to do and be mentally tough when I really need to be.